Hello everybody, it's Jack from The Modern Coder and I'm back with answers to your questions. It's, th this code is just a matter, it's just really cold in New York. It's the bad joke. Uh, thanks to everybody who watched the video. There was a lot more people who checked out the video than I originally thought. And a couple people actually left comments. So that's awesome. Thanks guys. And um, let's answer some questions. First question, what was your first job as a developer? So I guess my first job was probably freelancing, if you could call it that. This is the first job I actually got paid for. I think it was either late middle school or early high school. I just learned HTML and CSS and the basics of web design. And my aunt and uncle needed a website for their small business. I think it was a chair caning business. And so I put that together for them. I'm gonna see if I can find a screenshot and kind of put it here. But it was a little bit rough. This this is my very first you know, production website. So it was just pure HTML and CSS and the fancy frameworks that we have today. Um, I think I wrote some terrible plain JavaScript you know, photo gallery and that was that was kind of my first actual paid job. Then also back in those days, like early high school, I did a, another website for an upholstery shop in town. And that website ended up being a skin version of WordPress because in my mind I was like, well, if I use WordPress, he can edit it. And then he won't have to call me for updates. And then I, I, I used Photoshop and I put together this PDF of screenshots about how you use WordPress to update the website. It certainly was not the best fit for that job, but you know, it got it done. So this is my first two paying jobs. Without, we weren't really proper employment from an employer. So if you fast forward a couple years, um, in high school, me and my friend actually worked for a family friend who was starting up a small business. This business was a web application that helped people register for karate tournaments. So he was a professional developer by trade, and then in the, on the weekends, he would build this web application. And he hired us as interns. And he had like the, he had the full LLC and everything. So we were actually paid for real as interns. And, you know, bless this man. We were in his, uh, in his second floor, kind of like second bedroom that he converted into an office. We kind of like shoved us in there. I don't remember a lot about it, but I remember the website was coded in, uh, ASP.NET. And then we were doing some, some sort of like HTML, CSS frameworks on top of that. Anyways, that was my first two. I have more stories about paid jobs between, you know, that time when I actually got a full time job at Amazon. So, Maybe I'll take a whole video and kind of go through my whole career progression if that would be something you guys are interested in. All right, that was a good question, thanks. So next question, next question comes from Andrew. Um, what is your favorite type of coding? Do you prefer working on the front end or back end more? And I would personally love to know what you like to work on. So I would say I tend to enjoy front end development more than back end. And you know, I got started developing websites. So I always had this, I always felt like I valued the customer facing experience disproportionately more than some of my other colleagues or developers that I've met, you know, met along the way. And all this being said, I really feel like I need to defend myself because it's not exactly a popular opinion within the hardcore developer community to actually enjoy front end development. People, you know, say JavaScript is just this dumb, it's just this dumb simplified language and it doesn't really do anything interesting. But I think actually the customer experience and the front end JavaScript frameworks that we have now are actually fairly interesting. I guess background on this, in college I developed Rails applications um, for various projects. Then when I got to Amazon, I happened to end up on a team that was one of the first teams to adopt React.js within Amazon. And I had some really strong technical mentors who were working with React.js and Rails at the time. And so they really translated their passion for you know, front end and full stack development to me. And they really taught me basically the foundations of what I know today. So I'm really thankful for them. You know, I find that single page application development, especially when it's in the context of full stack is actually where I wanna be most of the time. It's what I, what I like to do. That was a good question, thanks. All right, next question comes from Vishal. He says, can you tell us what kind of technologies you're currently working on and how often you switch technologies and frameworks? Also, what is your favorite programming language? This is, this is an interesting question. This is a good question too. Currently, I'd say most of the products I work on are Ruby on Rails with React.js or some sort of uh, JavaScript framework front end, but you know, sprinkled in there are of course like various AWS services and distributed um, data stores, stuff like Elasticsearch is an example of an AWS service that's non-standard data storage. You, you know, you really go anywhere, you really can do any, you can really program or work with any sort of framework or technology. Yeah, currently my favorite programming language is Ruby and it's just, you know, because I write in it a lot, but also I like the sort of uh, functional aspects of it. So I think it's really easy and fun to write. Again, I work professionally with many languages, uh, Python, Java, JavaScript, um, really whatever. So that actually leads nicely into, I guess, the next part of your question, which was, if you're working with a tool or framework, how do you balance the fact that you're not going to be working with that tool or language or framework forever? 
So my advice and expertise has told me that understanding the concepts behind these frameworks is often you know, way more important than actually learning the frameworks themselves. You know, like we were, you were talking about how you were using Django in your job. Django is just a web application framework, just like Rails or Flask or, you know, the plethora of any others. So once you learn sort of the, the, the behind the scenes that make it tick, you know, the caching layers, the HTTP communication layers, the serialization stuff, like that's pretty standard across web application development. And web app development is not going anywhere anytime soon. Now, it took me a few years of struggling through, you know, learning different frameworks or technologies before I really started to grasp the concepts behind them. But now that I did, I, I'm really glad I took the time to understand that stuff. And if I could leave you with one actual piece of advice rather than just, you know, like keep trying, you can do it, is that you should try to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you at all times. I attribute a lot of my career growth to mentors that were willing to teach and who were passionate about helping other people. And so I've always moved teams. I've moved teams within Amazon if I didn't feel like I was getting that from my teammates or from my manager or from my from the culture of my organization. Because I think the most important thing is that you just keep learning. And if you keep learning, then you're benefiting yourself as well as the company. So I really can't understate the importance of working with talented mentors in your career. All right, so I think that's, I don't think, I know that was the only three questions that I had and they were great questions. So thank you all three of you guys for leaving questions. Um, it's really nice to see some engagement from, from, the, from everybody who's subscribed. So we're gonna keep doing these. If you have another question, if you have any more questions, leave it in the comments, I'd be happy to answer. Again, if I don't get enough comments, I'll just pick a topic and ramble on it. Let me know what you thought of it. Um, let me know if you have questions and um, I will see you in the next video. See you later.